Today I'm shooting in a place called Hinkley, California. It's kind of like a suburb, I guess, of Barstow. On the outskirts of Barstow. And it's right off of Old Highway or California Highway 58, which I've taken a number of times on my way to the San Francisco area from Vegas. You have to cut across the, to Bakersfield and 58 is the way to go. So I've driven it so many times. I've seen that billboard that we just looked at a bunch of times. And I always wondered, like, PG and E, which is the Pacific Gas and Electric, the utility, did it and always knew since 1952. What does that mean? Well, finally, I was driving one day and I was so bored that I Wikipedia'd it or Googled it. And you know what it is? <laughs> this, Hinkley, is the town where the movie Aaron Brockovich took place. I don't know if you ever saw that movie with Julie Roberts, it was really popular. Um, and it was about this little desert town that had contaminated groundwater that caused cancer in a bunch of the residents. And it was this huge class action lawsuit, I guess. Um, that, I mean, you can look it up online. It's really, I mean, everyone's seen Aaron Brockovich, right? She was like the little guy who helped these little people in this little town fight back against this monstrous utility. Um, and, you know, we all know what happened at the end of that movie. I think she won. And they got a huge settlement from pg and &E. And why did they get a settlement? Well, because it was proven that they were, I guess what happened was, they, there's a big gas line, natural gas line, that runs up the state of California that the utility uses to power homes from Bakersfield all the way up to the Oregon border. And they have to pressurize the gas to get it, I guess, to go fast, properly up the tube, I don't really, or up the pipeline. I don't understand how that works, but um, when they pressurize it, they have to, I guess, cool it down. I don't really understand the science behind it. You can look it up. But to keep the holding tanks for this cooling water from rusting, they put this stuff called chromium, hexavalent chromium, in the water to keep the tanks from rusting and that like in between uses they stored it in an unlined tank so that it seeped down into the groundwater of this area and hexavalent chromium is a really bad carcinogen so it got into the groundwater here and a bunch of people got cancer and then basically just abandoned the town I mean you can see this building I've been walking around is long abandoned Isn't that crazy I mean, look at this. Pretty much says it all. So since I have a little extra time on my hands on this drive, I thought I might take Hinkley Road, which goes off of the 58 and presumably deeper into the town of Hinkley and just poke around and see what we can see. I mean, I'm guessing there's probably not a whole lot of people who still live here. I'd get the hell out, especially if I won a million dollar lawsuit. <laughs> I'd take my money and go elsewhere. Although, realistically, it's, it is a beautiful desert here. It's really sad that it happened to these people. It's a nice, quiet corner of the Mojave Desert. I mean, it might not be beautiful to everybody, but, but it was a pretty nice place to live until the utility poisoned the water. by that school but I mean dang all it is is like abandoned houses I mean look at straight ahead there's nothing but look at this let's go check this place looks like it used to be pretty cool yeah 
morning. It's so quiet out here. It was spooky. Like everybody's dead. But you see what I mean? Like once we got off the highway, it's really beautiful desert. Look at these Joshua trees. It's so peaceful. I mean, the ground is sandy. Seems like it was probably a really nice place to live. It's a real bummer about what happened. Better go in the front because it looked like it had a really cool main entrance. I mean, this was probably some somebody's house and it was probably a pretty nice friggin' place. I mean, look stone wall and then this really cool entryway look at this so wagon wheels little gate man this was a nice friggin house there's a huge tree stump over there so they had a beautiful shade tree and now nothing Maybe this wasn't even a house. Maybe it was a restaurant or a business. I don't know. I mean, obviously this was the kitchen. Doesn't really look like a commercial kitchen, so I guess it was just a house. But this place is tore up. I mean, there's not any artifacts or anything to look at here. But, you know, you kind of know the history you've seen that movie, Aaron Brockovich, you can kind of imagine what went on here. Some family lived here. Somebody lived here. Out back they had a little yard. I mean, it looks like there's still people living in the distance. That's a pretty new car over there. Wow. I don't know. I mean, look at the view out of this window. So peaceful, but so eerie. Oh, I hear a dog barking. I better get out of here. You never know. I mean, if I was the people that lived here, I'd probably be tired of Mickey Lou's coming through. Going, hey, this is the place where all them kids died of cancer. You know, it's not just a curiosity. It's a really terrible thing that happened in people's lives, you know? I try to be respectful of that in my explorations. You know, because there's definitely ruin porn and there's that aspect to it. But there's also the, I don't know, kind of like the archaeological aspect or, you know, trying to piece together what happened in these places, what went wrong, maybe learn a lesson so that it won't happen again. Looks like there's so many abandoned places out here. You could go exploring forever. Oh, that's not abandoned. There's a car in that one. It says no trespassing all over it. I guess they figure people like me might go snooping around. Who can blame them? Wow, what a trip. I mean, there's still a few homesteaders hanging on out here. Kind of reminds me if you've ever been down to the Salton Sea, how you see uh, so much decay and abandoned ruins, and then every once in a while, there's a house where someone's still living there. Because, you know, shit, you sunk your whole life savings into buying a place. Can't let a little thing like hexavalent chromium chase you away, you know what I mean? Dig in and hope for the best. This is poisoned with arsenic. That's what that house said. Damn, it had a sign on it. Basically, like, don't come in here. It's poisoned with arsenic. Guess I'll stay away from that one. Wow. Look, there's a school. 
School looks like it's still open. Wow. Can you imagine being a kid here? It'd be scary. Can you imagine being a parent of a kid here? That'd be scary too. A little worry about your kid getting cancer. Sad that uh, there's some people who just really don't have the option of moving. Should I go right or left? I don't know that man went left. Looks like, well, I'll go right. Let's see what's over this way. I mean, look. <laughs> Looks like a whole lot of nothing. But it's usually where the most interesting stuff is. And this is some lonely country. Oh, pavement's about to end. I might have to turn around. And I'm just sort of driving around the back streets of this little community, and it's really depressing, man. And I feel bad for the people that are stuck here. But who knows? I mean, maybe they prefer it this way. You know, they just drink bottled water like the people in Flint. Don't grow any vegetables. Really interesting. Oh, look, there's the fire department. Man, this is really creepy. It's like visiting a like a post-apocalyptic abandoned town in a way. It's really sad. But the irony in all of that is, you know, here I am driving around burning up gas, which you know is petroleum fuel, not natural gas, which is what poisoned these people. Well, actually, the natural gas isn't what poisoned them. The, the chromium used to protect the gas lines from rusting is what poisoned them. But anyway, my point in all that is, like, it's really easy to cast blame on PG&E or whatever for poisoning people, but you know, I'm basically poisoning people by driving around like I am. So I just, I try to remember that and not get too preachy about environmental stuff because I'm a big environmentalist. I love the outdoors and I mean, I try to, I pick up after myself and I try to reuse things as long as I can until they fall apart, whatever, blah, blah. But at the same time, I drive around a lot. And that's a pretty big carbon footprint. <laughs> Anyways, man, that was Hinkley. Really a creepy place.